Good morning. Welcome to worship, welcome to Trinity, and welcome to all those who will be worshiping with us online all throughout this week. This is our All Saints Remembrance service, and so towards the end of our service, you will be invited to come up and light um, any one of these candles. You can light, we will have these candles lit, the tall ones lit, and you can light your candles off of that for any reason that you may have. Uh, during our service today, we honor our blessed dead who are members of our congregation as well as names that, that you and par- folks who are part of our congregation have given to us. Um, also, I want to note this frontal right here. We don't usually have a frontal on this table. And yes, I'm using very fancy liturgical words. This is actually called a frontal. I had to look it up too. But this right here, this beautiful piece, is from Freedom Lutheran Church. It's a sister congregation of ours um, that closed this year. So we will be honoring them as well, and it's a reminder to us that Trinity Lutheran Church is not an island. We share our ministries with churches across this region and across this country. So we will be praying and giving thanks for all folks who associate with Freedom Lutheran Church. Beyond that, everything that you need uh, for the words and the prayers will be up on the screens. Musical elements can be found in the uh, uh, songbooks that are right in front of you that are uh, labeled worship on the binder. Also today, we have a lot going on. And one more thing during our worship, we will be, excuse me, we will be welcoming Chuck and Kathy Peterson. They have chosen to become members of our congregation, and we are excited about that. So don't worry, you don't have to turn and stare at them right now, I promise. They will be up front, and I want you to stare at them then. Um, They also, I just checked, they passed the quiz, so we're good to go. Um, But we're very excited. Thank you for joining our congregation. With all of that being said, let us begin. We are gathered in the name of our triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Merciful God, we have not reflected your presence. Forgive us, Lord, of our willingness to judge the lives of others. We have not shown kindness to the stranger nor compassion to the neighbor who lives, loves, or looks different from us. Forgive us, Lord, of our acceptance of inequality. We have embraced valuing life based on income and ability. We have not allowed the uneven, we have allowed the uneven distribution of goods, health care, and land. Forgive us, Lord, of holding close our resources. 
We have placed expectations in front of gifts. We have resisted your call to be generous and assumed that our lives are of our own creation. People of God, we know all that we have done and left undone. We also know that God's love is steadfast and his mercy endures forever. We are restored to wholeness through Christ who sets us free and makes us a new creation. Breathe easy. You are forgiven in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Spirit 
to guide that you center our lives in the water and the word that you nourish our souls with your body and blood let us pray to the lord let us pray to the lord Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way Kyrie eleison every day Today's Gospel reading is the Gospel according to Luke, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus raised his eyes to his disciples and said, Happy are you who are poor, because God's kingdom is yours. Happy are you who hunger now, because you will be satisfied. Happy are you who weep now, because you will laugh. Happy are you when people hate you, reject you, insult you, and condemn your name as evil because of the human one. Rejoice when that happens. Leap for joy because you have, begun, you have a great reward in heaven. Their ancestors did the same things to the prophets. But how terrible for you who are rich because you all have already received your comfort. How terrible for you who have plenty now because you will be hungry. Terrible for you who laugh now because you will mourn and weep. How terrible for you when all speak well of you. Their ancestors did the same things to the false prophets. But I say to you who are willing to hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on the cheek, offer the other as well. If someone takes your coat, don't withhold your shirt either. Give to everyone who asks, and don't demand your things back from those who take them. Treat people in the same way that you want them to treat you. The Gospel of Christ, the Lord. So where are you on this list? You're probably already thinking it a little bit anyway, because Jesus begins his sermon by making a list. Happy are you, and then he flips the page. How terrible for you. And so that sounds like we're somewhere on this list. How we hear this list probably depends on how we see ourselves. How we find ourselves coming into this space on this particular morning, it probably depends on how we see our neighbors, how we see our community, how we see our school, how we see creation. How we hear this list, as it sounds like a list, probably depends on how we envision the kingdom of God. Jesus begins by talking to the disciples, which means he's talking to you and me, and he offers up statements about happiness, which Lutherans don't really use the word happy, so it's kind of a weird translation, I know. A little bit of an aside, Luke loves the word joy and rejoicing. 
of the four Gospels, he's the one who is quite ebullient and loving the idea that Jesus is at work in this world here and now in our lives, so we should be joyful. And so some translators, like this particular one, goes with the word happy. It's also kind of weird and it sounds awkward. We probably prefer blessed because your translation at home would say that. But we have those. And then Jesus, because this is a sermon, or at least in my Bible, the subheading says he's, this is a sermon on the plane. It's almost like he takes the sermon, flips the page over, and then he says, how terrible for you. So where are you on this list? How do you find yourself? How do you identify yourself? And how do you identify your neighbors? How do we see each other through this lens, through this, this, these descriptors that we've been given by Jesus? In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus is very much of the earth. He's very much of our lives. So it's kind of like he's standing in our midst. He knows our daily lives, and so he uses our language, our terminology, and the way we walk in the world. And, and the way that we walk in the world, or at least our culture here walks in the world, is very much like a binary. Black, white, poor, rich, sad, joyful, dejected, beloved. We live in this world where we presume that that's how the world works, that if there are rich, well, then there must be poor, and if there are poor, well, then inevitably there's going to be rich folks as well. And we have this perception, because we live in this world, and this is how we function, and maybe this is how we think, that, speaking of that first line, happy are you who are poor, or how terrible for you who are rich, that if there are rich people, well, then there must be people who struggle with economic despair economic distress. And if there are people who have enough and maybe have more than enough, well, then inevitably there must be people that just must be the way the world works. Jesus is naming how we walk in the world. He's naming how we see each other, how we see this world. So we go back to that question, where do we see ourselves on this list? Or maybe we should ask ourselves, where do we see our neighbors on this list? One of the challenges, and there's a lot of challenges whenever we're hanging out with Jesus, he, he kind of pushes on us a lot but one of the challenges we encounter with this list, and especially if we, if we find ourselves on the back page of the sermon, it sounds a little bit, living in a binary world like we do, it sounds a little bit like Jesus is telling us that he's going to come into our house and he's going to grab some gold out of our portfolio and he's just going to arbitrarily give it to other people. Or he's going to come into our kitchen and he's going to grab all of our favorite snacks, he's going to bag them up and he's going to give them to the neighbor. And when we hear it like that, we begin to bristle we get a little upset, we get a little on edge because we live in a world of binaries. If there are people who are rich, well, then there must be people who are poor. If there's people who are joyful, well, then there must be people who are sad. If there's people who are full, then there must be people who hunger. It's just the way the world works. This is the way our world works. Jesus is entering into our world and standing amongst us and naming what we already know. At the same time, Luke tells us in verse 20, Jesus raised his eyes to his disciples. So yes, this is a sermon, it's for the whole world, it's for all of creation, and there were a lot of people who were gathered around him in that valley where he was preaching here in chapter six, but he's actually talking primarily to us, to you and to me. And you and me, even though we live in this binary world just like everybody else, and we, we understand black and white, right and wrong, poor and rich, hunger and being full, even though we dwell in that and may find ourselves in that, in that reality ourselves, we also know about God's kingdom. We also know about grace. We also know about forgiveness. We know about justice. We know about love. So in a sense, yes, Jesus is naming what we know and Jesus is naming where we exist or maybe where our neighbors exist or where we see each other, where we see our neighbors and all the ways that we use these binaries to bind ourselves up and to separate ourselves from each other. We have so many different ways where we can, where we can use black and white, right and wrong, poor and rich or choose your own descriptors as ways to separate ourselves out, to, to keep other people away, to identify and apply labels so that we ourselves know what we're doing. But we're disciples. We've been called by God, we've been blessed by God, we have been washed in these waters, we are fed at this table, we know about God's kingdom, we know 
something different. It's not that we're being pulled out of this world in some bizarre sort of multiverse sense, but really we are of this world, but we are being set apart. We have been marked by the cross of Christ. So when Jesus speaks to us and names our reality and names what we know in this world and the binaries in which we exist and in which we are bound, at the same time he is reminding us, and this is where he kind of melts our brains a little bit, but he's also reminding us that at the exact same time, these binaries do not exist because we're in God's kingdom. We're part of God's kingdom. We're part of God's work in this world. So yes, we recognize this, we see this, we experience this in our lives, we experience this in the lives of our neighbors, but we also know that our neighbors, we know that we are more than poverty, hunger, sadness, dejection. We know that our neighbors are more than poverty, hunger, sadness, dejection. We know our neighbors are people of God, just like us. We know that God loves and that God is at work in this world right now. This is an odd text, I will admit, to hear on this particular weekend. We come here on this particular weekend, we gather in this space, our spaces like this, and we come here to remember our saints, our dearly beloved, those who have died in the last year, those who have died 20 years ago, but we still carry their thoughts and their memories with us because they are our beloved. So we gather in this space with our sadness, with our pain, with our disappointment, maybe our anger. We gather here because we still feel physically distant from our saints as we long for them to be near. And so we light candles and we offer prayers. And on this particular weekend, maybe we hear stories like this and sermons like this because we are people of God. We are disciples. We gather here, or maybe I should say God got us here, sometimes dragging us, kicking and screaming, but we are brought into God's presence again to remember that God's kingdom is at work and that Christ has destroyed death, on the gra- death and the grave so that there is no separation between us and God, which means there is no separation between our dearly beloved and God. Death has no claim, so part of our gathering in this space is to give thanks that we dwell in the kingdom of God that's breaking into this world here and now so that we can be surrounded by our saints. Scripture tells us that our saints sing with us, that our saints pray alongside of us, that when we share in this meal, It is a sacrament that has no end. So when we gather at this table, Christ feeds us as Christ is feeding our saints. We have a vision of the kingdom that is far beyond the binaries of this world and the limits that we place upon ourselves. We gather in this space so that God can remind us again, so Jesus can speak directly to us again and remind us that we are loved by grace and that we are loved through forgiveness. We are loved through the cross that we are not separated from God and that we are not separated from each other. Jesus is setting us free from everything that binds us up. Jesus is breaking loose everything that keeps us from our neighbors. Jesus is applying to us a promise, a good news, that nothing will separate us from the love of God, not even these binaries and ways that we see our world and see our neighbors and maybe see ourselves. Every one of these descriptors that Jesus uses, as he uses them, he knows they fall short. They're words that we use. And he uses them to overcome every barrier and obstacle that we create. Every descriptor falls short. Every assumption falls short. Everything we know about our neighbors and we create to know and and hold fast to, it all rings hollow and false at the foot of the cross. In the presence of God, we are beloved. We have been claimed. We are set free. Not even death can reach us. And this gift that Jesus gives to us as God's people in this space, God's kingdom breaking through this space, this gift is flowing through you. It's why Jesus raises his eyes to the disciples. Because you and I know We know forgiveness, we know grace, we know the promise of everlasting life and that it's not something that we have to wait for when we die, but it washes through us and over us every moment with every breath. Every time we wash our hands, we can remember baptism. Every time we gather at this table, we are being fed and nourished again. All other words fall short. Through Christ, 
we see an opportunity to proclaim that God's kingdom, God's justice, God's equity, God's promise for God's people, it is coming to bear on our world right now. And it's coming to bear on our world through you. Amen. Friends, will you please rise as you're able. I want to invite up Chuck and Kathy Peterson. If you have not yet had the chance to meet either of them or both of them, they are fascinating people that you guys have lived some pretty amazing journeys in your life. So we're grateful that your paths have crossed ours. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We are called to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Friends, let us pray. God, we give you thanks for Kathy and Chuck whom you have drawn to yourself by the love of Jesus Christ and whom we have welcomed into this household of faith. Keep us close together in your spirit, in the breaking of bread and the prayers, and in the service to others. Lord, for these and for all the prayers that we carry with us, we pray that you bind them in your name. Amen. Welcome to Trinity. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Go ahead and welcome them, friends. This weekend, as we remember and give thanks, surrounded by the saints of light and the ancestors <clears throat> excuse me, who led us this far, we now offer our prayers to God. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the gift of the blessed saints who taught us love and forgiveness. Grant us courage to proclaim resurrection within our sadness. Shape us to share your promise with those for whom we teach and guide. Holy One, as the weather turns around us, make us mindful of any in our midst 
who are struggling with heat, clothing, food, or shelter. Break us from acceptance that we might be bearers of your kingdom as we strive for the needs of our neighbors. Holy One, we continue to hold up our fervent prayers for peace. We pray for the people of the Ukraine who continue to live barricaded against violence and weapons of war. Bring forth your peace that we cannot and protect your children from devastation. Holy One, we pray this week for our elected officials and for those charged with ensuring an equitable process of voting. May all, given a voice, have access to a polling station or drop box. May those whom we elect seek first dignity and respect for humanity. Holy One, we pray for all who are sick, suffering, recovering, or awaiting results. And we offer to you now those names aloud or in our hearts. We pray for Gary, Peter, Tyler, Margaret, Ron, the family of Rose Avey. <clears throat> Merciful God, you hear our prayers and you respond with compassion and peace, trusting that you are ever near. We close these prayers as together we say, Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace with our neighbors. As you're seated, I will call Melissa forward for her announcements. Just a couple from, from my end, and you can find these on the bulletin as well, but I like pulling them off the page just so we can maybe catch our eye a little differently. Um, the Pajama Project, we, are, we continue to gather in names of families. Um, just want to help get the word out that the deadline for receiving names in families is November 11th, so that's coming up very quickly. So if you know of a family in your community who might want some pajamas or uh, Sometimes we do hoodies for uh, older kids. Um, please, uh, please let them know. We have the slips on the tables at either entrance, entry space. Um, you can just, it's very simple. They just put in um, ages, sizes. Now, that's really about it. Maybe, you know, an address. We need to know how to get the gifts to them. But there's no, you know, we don't check for anything. We don't really ask anything, just for some basic information. So again, if you have a neighbor, you have someone in your life who you think uh, would love to have some new pajamas for winter, maybe a new hoodie for our, uh, or sweat clothes for our um, bigger kids, just let them know. We, we, we're, the Pajama Project is one of these great ministries that we just love giving things away. So help us give things away. Maybe that's what I need to say. Just help us give things away, please. We need your help. Um, next week, for those of us um, who, would like, who would like to know this, next week the council will be hanging out with us um, right after worship. And we'll hang out for those who want to have that conversation. We will be in this space. The council uh, continues always to be looking for ways where we can increase our communication and our transparency. So next week, council members will be in this space, talk about the budget, talk about things going on that we're planning for planning or thinking about for 2023, all of that, or you just want to know some basic details about what's going on in the life of the church and how you might be engaged, next week is a great time to ask all of those questions. Melissa, what do you have? Hello, everyone. Um, well, I just wanted to mostly thank everyone for our awesome trip.
Friends, will you please rise? You're able. We will prepare for communion. Oh. Thank you, Carol. Thank you for reminding us of that. Please rise. For those of you who are squatting, please stand all the way up. <laughs> Let us pray together. Lord, teach us to be generous. Teach us to serve as you deserve to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, save that of knowing that we do your will. In your name we pray, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Of your glory, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he gave thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and when he gave thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Confident our Lord is at work in this meal, we offer the prayer that he first taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace, grant us peace, Lamb of God.
What feast of love is offered here? What banquet come from heaven? What food of everlasting life? What gracious gift is given? This, this is Christ the King, the bread come down from heaven. Oh, taste and see and sing how sweet the manna given. What light of truth is offered here? What covenant from heaven? What hope of everlasting life? What wondrous word is given? This, this is Christ the King, the Son come down from heaven. Oh, see and hear and sing, the word of God is given. What wine of love is offered here? What crimson drink from heaven? What stream of heaven? <coughs> Lord is given. This, this is Christ the King. The sweetest wine of heaven. Oh, taste and see and sing. The Son of God is given. O God of the Pilgrim's Way, we give thanks for this meal that binds us to each other and the countless saints in light. We celebrate the generations past who have been examples of God's light, love in the world. As we pray, we know that we are surrounded by this great rejoicing cloud of witnesses. Yet even as we name these holy ancestors, we thank God for others whose names we never knew or have forgotten, who showed us the meaning of life in Christ. Thank you for their witness, O God. For these blessed saints, we give you thanks. Jane Miller. Sherry Ghibellini. Doug Rainey. Ruth Myers.
We also remember Robert Astrom, Leona Bula, Gary Kane, Daryl Cave, Gene Corbett, Charlie Dilbeck Jr., Sylvia Etnire, John Franks, Pablo Ferretti, Mike Gibellini, Joel Gunther, Dwayne Hackbarth, Kurt Heinrich, David Helfrich, Dorothy Helfrich, Vic Helfrich, Lisa Hughes, Muriel Holmes, Virginia Huff, Adam Neasley, Walt Lefevre, Shelley Potts Mahoney, Tom McKeever, Walter Monk, Carl Nelson, Trisha Kais Pays, John Ryberg, Ida Sanchez, Nancy Schmidt, Mark Snodgrass, Dick Sweeney, Joyce Toomson, Gene Trenton, Michael Johnson. We give our thanks and praise for Freedom Lutheran Church's ministries throughout its life, its gatherings for worship, its faithful use of the means of grace, and its study of scripture. For all who are baptized, nurtured in faith, confirmed, or blessed in any way through freedom, we pray that the Holy Spirit's gifts sustain God's people long after this congregation's outward expression ended. We pray for and stand alongside the people of Freedom Lutheran Church as they continue to grieve the holy closure of their congregation. We pray for compassion as we place our hope in the promise that the final day of worship at Freedom was not simply an ending, but also the beginning of new opportunities for praise and service. In the midst of our memories of those who have gone ahead, we also remember our people among us this day who have been washed in your holy baptism. Callan Wayne Knowles. Adrian Quintana. We also continue to pray for Caleb Ayler. Cooper Johnson. R.J. Keem. Holy God, we honor these, our ancestors in faith, and our members living in our community. We too seek to do your will. Guide us, O God. We too desire to be your servants. Strengthen us, O God. We too long to know you clearly. Teach us, O God. In time, bring us to our, to our eternal home of peace and joy. Thank you for your promise, O God. You are welcome to come forward and light a candle for any prayer you wish.
Will you please rise, you're able. Saints of light, as we cherish the memory of our beloved, remember that you are loved. You are blessed in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit this day and every day. Amen. Trot and quicken. 